All right, we are here today with Sunnyside Soccer head coach, Mr. Casey O'Brien. Thank you for being here with us, taking time out of your day. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I uh, had two soccer practices already and, and I'm here, so I'm doing well. Already getting to work. That sounds like the Sunnyside fashion. Um, first of all, before we begin with all the questions today, I just want to congratulate you on a couple of things. Um, not only on a great season on paper this year, that saw your team go 23-1-1, win two distinct titles, and have a program high in national ranking at number seven according to Max Preps. I also want to congratulate you on your overall um, sunny side record so far at 165 wins, 34 losses, and eight draws so far. Very impressive. It has placed the team not only on the regional radar in soccer, but on the state radar, where teams from Phoenix now are looking at Sunnyside on their schedule and seeing, man, it's something that we have to go do, something that, that we have to go play. Um, so first of all, congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. I didn't, I didn't know all those uh, statistics, so it's cool. Yeah, of course, and I mean, it's very eye-opening to see overall how you have progressed from, you, from when you've started in 2015, and only a handful of coaches have been able to do what you've done in your eight-year career so far. What do you think have been some of your keys to success? Uh, so our, uh, the number one key to success is just is literally just the, the work ethic that we all have in the program. I mean, it starts with me. Uh, you know, you got to be you, you got to be able to model what you ask for. If, if you can't model it, you'll never get it from your kids. A lot of people want to ask kids to do something, their team, their players. And I mean, you, you don't get a lot back because you don't give a lot. So my, my philosophy is I give everything I ask for because at the end of the day, if I ask a kid to be there and work as hard as they possibly can, and I have to be doing the same thing. So that work ethic, it just trickles down to the team. And I think like the fact that I'm willing to do some of the small stuff, like I'll run, I lift, I play, I train. Like obviously in the season, I, I back off and I focus on the kids because that's obviously the goal is to have them be the great. But you know, the fact that I'm in there mixing it up every single day at 36 years old, I think sets a tone for them that there really is no excuse. So. The, the work that we put in, it, and to be honest with you, I modeled it after the wrestling program so that when I came here, uh, that's the first thing I saw, their success. And the, what they do that no one else does is they just relentlessly work. No excuses, no days off. And I mean, it's incredible what they do. So seeing that as a, as a younger coach that just was getting into high school, like that was the model to follow. And I mean, you see, like when I got here, I believe they had 32 state titles. So, I mean, mm -hmm. you just hear that legacy and you're like, wow, what are they doing? So I took the time to go to the wrestling room, talk to Coach Leon, you know, I talked to RBY, I talked to guys like that that were in the program at the time and just like picked their brain. And I mean, why not, why not do what they're doing? It, it obviously works. And it's nice to see how other programs have been able to influence your program um, and winning a state title and doing so many things. And the, worth e and the work ethic, it shows on the field too. Multiple instances, multiple games this season where it's gone down to the wire. Hamilton, the final, the soccer showcase. Brandon Bean, same thing. Players still running up and down after those 60, 70 minutes. Um, something that you know not many teams can do. Not many teams are conditioned. Not many teams are willing to go their extra mile to go ahead and accomplish um, what you guys have done. Now, whenever we look at your career overall so far around these eight years, um, the players, you know, they have been, there has been a trend that we have been noticing here um, that, it, that has been constant, but this year we've seen a little bit of rise of your players going to college to continue the career with the beautiful game. What changes do you think you've seen in your players um, since day one that you stepped foot here on Sunnyside? And what do you think that you're doing to prepare them on and off the field so they can succeed at the next level? That's a good question. Um, that's something I think about a lot, actually, like where I started to where we are now. Um, I came here with my mindset and I got matched up right away with a completely different mindset that I, I wasn't a big fan of. Um, it was a lot of, I, I wouldn't say like, they had expectations, but they, mm -hmm. in my, in my, in, in my experience and in my mind, what they set the bar for, like just making a playoff game or even just beating certain teams, like that mm -hmm. was the bar. And to me, that bar is very low. Um, they got third place in the tournament the year, the year before I got here. And that was like their crowning achievement. They had pictures of mm -hmm. it. They all talked about it. And I mean, for me, like I've never been one to settle. Like settling is not in my blood. It's not in my DNA. And uh, that was the very first thing that changed was the expectation. I literally, I remember we were sitting, we used to have a bike room where we had bikes. I was sitting in the bike in the front. I had about 
maybe 20 kids that had were returning players that were you know just starting with me mm -hmm. and we were talking about goals and like the first couple answers were I want to beat Desert View like, okay, what else can we do? I want to beat South Point. It's like, okay, now we're getting in the right direction. And so I want to beat Tucson High because they were the big dog when we got here. I was like, okay, like I like where we're going. And then it's like, think bigger. So the next one was obviously, I want to make the playoffs. I never made the playoffs. I want to make a playoff game. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, these are the goals that I want. And this is what our program should be aiming for. Because if I'm going to come here and we're just going to work, mm -hmm. like our goals can't be low. So the mindset that I came in with versus the mindset that they had, I feel like they adapted their mindset like right away. Once they saw that I was all in, like I love this, like I love it. I'm all in every day. And I, they saw that and I think that like that energy that I brought in and the changes to the program just in dedication, like the mindset changed instantly. And then like nobody was talking about any of that anymore. It was like, I wanna win a title. I wanna mm -hmm. play in college. I want everything. Like, and, and that that's the mindset we have now is like, we're not trying to lose anybody. We're trying to win tournaments. We're trying to win rings. Like, and ultimately, it's just like being successful. And then the thing that the kids never realized, but now they're starting to figure out, is when we talk about success in soccer, like that's all they're thinking about. Like, I'm a soccer player. I want to be successful. But then it translates. Like, as soon as they're done at Sunnyside, like they literally can just adapt that mindset to a different, you know, realm in their life, and they can be successful in anything. So it's like. It's been cool to see that my influence has changed their mindset and then that mindset can translate outside of soccer. And like we've had kids that are like just super successful people that I don't know if they weren't part of this program, if that would have been the outcome. And I mean, day one to now, that's the one thing I reflect on the most is changing the mindset and changing the culture of like what our expectation is. Of course. And do you think that there was ever any resistance or do you think that that change that you wanted to implement was it immediate or did it really take some time in order to go ahead and lay down the framework to be where you're at today? Took time. Um, I had a handful of kids when I first got here that bought in right away. Um, one guy's still here, Chuma. You know, he coached mm -hmm. the freshman team this year, Brian Chumacera. He bought in. He was the superstar when I got here. He was a junior my first year, the best player here. Um, and he bought in, which was big for me because best player you have right buys mm -hmm. in day one starts doing everything you ask him to do obviously some of the other kids start doing that too we had some guys that didn't want to work like they wanted they just wanted to come here and just mess around and have fun which there's teams for that right like there's sunday league men's league like mm -hmm. that's cool if that's your your objective but um those kids washed out real fast so i did have a handful of kids when i first got here and i still talk to some of them um there's a guy named we had a guy rafa or Milo, or Emilio Hurtado, um, who was second in his class, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And Brian Trumacera, who went on to play at Pima, Lake Tahoe. Um, uh, Jesus Santa Cruz, like uh, Cesar Delgadillo, Chuy Ortega. Like those guys all legitimately, when I got here, they, they showed up every day and they were sweating and they were dying and it was really hard for them. Cause I came in in shape, mm -hmm. like I was used to that. You know, like I was like, hey, we're gonna run two miles to warm up and then we're gonna go run five, like, let's go. You know, and that was easy for me. And I brought kids with me that already had that mindset. So they're like, God, these incoming freshmen are doing all this stuff. This is crazy, you know? And th that core group bought in. And then that core group just exploded because we had the most successful season they had had in a long time. We beat teams that they had never beat. We were second in the Brandon Bean, which they had, ne they had never been that far or knew anybody mm -hmm. that went that far, you know, prior to like what their knowledge of the program was. So like the results were immediate. And I was an assistant that year, but like, legitimately I was with them more than anybody else so I feel like I was the coach at that point in time and then the next year it transitioned to me and it just like we just took off you know we never missed the playoffs and that was something that they said like I've never been in a playoff game before I got here we never missed it so like they bought in but they also reap the benefits of you know what we implemented yeah of course and whenever we uh, fast forward back to the season you know Going back over the, all these accompli accomplishments, there was a little piece missing. Um, you guys were so close to accomplishing something that only few teams in Tucson can go ahead of even dream of doing. Um, and that's just because since the introduction of conference play, no team in Tucson has been able to win the 6A title just yet. What challenges do you think you've had to face in 6A? all these years and what do you think you want to do next year to overcome that hump and finally say we're the first one to do it um and just you know have that have those bragging rights because it's something very big mm -hmm. it is yeah and i mean you were part of the team this year so you know i talked a lot about wanting to be first i mean i wanted to be the first coach here that won a title and like fortunately that happened that's awesome but now it's like 
I want to chase another first. And nobody in Tucson's ever won a 6 eight title in any sport. Um, our wrestling team has obviously won Division One state titles, mm -hmm. which is the equivalent of 6 eight. So you can say that they have. But outside of them, there's nobody. Like, there's nobody that's won a 6 eight title. No, nobody in Tucson can say that they've done that in any sport. And I, I think that we have the ability to be the first team to break through and do that. You know, a lot of people have excuses like we're not big enough, we're not fast enough, they have more kids than us. Like, I don't believe in any of that. Like, I, I'm, and for me, like when we talk about competition, it would be, um, I would be a hypocrite if I backed down from a mm -hmm. 6A conference. Like, and, and I will never be that. So that's what I want. I, I want to win in 6A and I want our program to have that. I want our kids to have that experience and to have that, like, for the rest of their life, that chip on their shoulder where they can say, like, I did this. And this year, we, we had the team, we had the chance, you know, like, it didn't happen. And I understand a lot of people from the outside looking in are like, you lost in the quarterfinals. But they don't understand, like, what our season looked like as opposed to, like, you, you know, you have other teams that are like, we want a title. And that's cool, but they're winning titles against teams that, like, we would probably win, like, 10-0. And I'm not, that's no disrespect to them, but at the same time, like, our goal is bigger than that. Like, and to be the best and, and to have nobody that can say that they were better than you, that's the 6A champion. And that's the big dog in whatever sport, you know, and that's like, that's an ultimate achievement. So yeah, there was a big piece missing this year. It wasn't a little piece. Cause I told the kids, actually, we talked about this on Wednesday and we talked about mindset and like, you know, the mindset that you have to have is like, you want something more than everybody expects from you. You have to want more in your life than, you know, than what people think that you're entitled to. And so for us, that mindset is it's a state title, like, and nothing less. And last year we lost in the quarterfinals, same thing. It's crushing because, like, we're not going to look back on the season and, and reflect on and be like, this was a great season. It was a good season, and we had a good time, and we accomplished a lot. But, like, the ultimate goal wasn't accomplished, which is a 6 eight title. And we realistically might only have two more years to accomplish that goal because, you know, the bigger schools are getting bigger, we're getting smaller. Um, I don't know if we'll stay there. So the Open starts next year. So that's our new goal is we want to win an Open championship. Because, again, like, obviously there's only an Open in basketball. Nobody in Tucson's won that. Nobody's even gotten close. They can't even sniff that in, in basketball. Like, no disrespect to their programs, but they're not going to get close. But, like, we can. And that's our goal next year with the kids that we have coming back and the kids that we have coming in. Like, there's no excuse for why we can't do that. And winning an Open – I mean, that's pretty cool. You know, like that, that would be like a crowning achievement, especially at Sunnyside. You're talking about, a, a, you know, a tough luck school yeah. with a small student population. You know, a lot of our kids aren't even involved in athletics. A lot of our kids aren't even, you know, doing some of the things they're supposed to be doing. So you can't even involve them in our enrollment. Um, we're, we could be the smallest 6A school. We could win a 6A state title. We could be the smallest 6A school and we could win an open state title. And like, that's the goal. And that's what we all want, not just me. Yeah, and you know, you notice in the community too, and on behalf of, of people in the community, because obviously I come from here, I live from here too, um, we just want to go ahead and thank you too, because the changes you're doing, not just, and people like me as one of your uh, players this year, but in all my different teammates, there's never been someone who tells us to dream big. It's always been focused on, oh, you have to do good in school, or you're, you're going to do this. And you're, you're going to be set this. And no one has ever told us, hey, go dream big. Go do something. And the community is rallying behind you. The community is, you, we've seen it this year. Um, obviously, past years, there hasn't been that much of a support from the community, the empty stands. But this year, it's something totally, completely different. And I hope that that also allows a little push um, just to reach that goal. Now, now, when we start looking at the present right now, only a few amount of people know that you have commenced preparations for the 2024-25 season. If there is a message at all that you have for your rivals or those who don't believe in Sunnyside soccer, what do you think it would be? I'm not worried about anybody else. And I, and when I do talk about other programs, like it's, there's no disrespect because everybody's putting in work. Like, and these kids all like they they're proud of their programs and they want their programs to be great. So, I, I got no disrespect towards anybody else. I want to be the smallest school versus the biggest school. Like, for our program, we we want it all. And, and I I mean I'll say that till the day I retire, you know, until I step down. Like, I I want to beat all of them. And I don't I mean it doesn't matter if they're a rival. It doesn't matter if they're in Tucson, Phoenix, whatever. I mean, obviously, there's like a little chip on our shoulder with some of the schools in Phoenix right now because 
you know, like Mesa, like they got us. Perry, they got us. Mm -hmm. And like that, you know, is a tough way to end your season. You see your seniors crumble. You know, you see them not accomplish their dreams. Because like you're saying, like, we want to be incredible. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be basic. I don't want to be normal. I want to be incredible. I want my kids to be incredible. I want you guys to have dreams outside of soccer that are bigger. You know, like, everybody's thinking, like, I'm going to be this or I'm going to be that. And it's like, you know, the bar is low again. Like, you know, we're trying to change all that. So it's not about our rivals. It's just about us. Like, all I focus on is our kids. Like, south side kids, sunny side kids. Like, I love these kids. And my message to everybody else is if you're not, like competing against us, you should support us because why not, man? Like, you know, look at like what these kids are going through, what they come from. Like, you know, you're coming from the trenches, you're coming from the bottom and you're, and you're setting a bar so high that even kids that have so much can't even set for themselves. Like people should rally around that. Like, that's pretty incredible. You, you watch some Disney movies that have basically the same plot line, you know, like McFarland. I've watched mm -hmm. that movie. Like that's a pretty similar plot line to what we have here instead of like, it's not like migrant farmers, it's people that are coming, you know, like they're getting into this country and they're trying to get something for their family that they never had. And like these kids are the first ones in the US to be a student, to be a person in the US, to be a citizen in the US. Like, you know, that's, a, that's tough, man. And then they're also succeeding, like that's pretty amazing. So that's my message to our, our rivals or whoever else is like, if we're not competing against each other, there should be some love thrown our way because our, our kids really do go through it. Like I experience it every year. I've been through so much with these guys. Like, and I don't think there's many schools that go through the same, especially the ones that are at the level that we're at, because the schools that are at our level are generally the ones that are thriving. You know what I mean? Like, especially in Phoenix, like those are the big schools. Those are schools with a lot of money, a lot of resources. Their kids are okay. And that's why they're so good. Cause their kids are at club. They're going to camps. Their parents can support them. Like they're helping them here. We're all self built. Like we go out to that field out there every day. And that's where they get majority of their training is right there. Like nobody else has a hand in it except for them. Like they do it for themselves. So I think that that's a pretty special thing. And I love that message, keeping it competitive um, on the field, but off the field, supporting each other. I love that message. If um, you're part of the community, South Tucson, come and support the program. Come and back these boys. There's a lot of hard work. There's a lot of energy being put in this program. Um, and they'd really, really, really appreciate it just because another person in the stands is another person that we're working for because we see ourselves, um, we see you guys in ourselves. We see every member of this community. We see um, every person who's out there working construction, on a roof, doing something like that uh, just to help support their families. We see it in ourselves and we, we fight for you guys. Um, y también si eres parte de nuestra comunidad por favor ven a apoyar a nuestros muchachos que van a estar jugando la próxima temporada miramos a ustedes en nosotros y peleamos y jugamos por ustedes y su apoyo sería muy 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 agradecido nomás porque siempre estamos ahí tres días al día muchas horas al día de la semana del año y sin ustedes esto no sería posible Thank you, Coach O'Brien, for being here with us today. I yes, really sir. appreciate your time. And You're welcome. You. It's my pleasure. Southside. Southside, yes, sir.